that scary and it's not even Halloween yet. Well, her tenure was as short as her list of achievements, her unpopularity legendary. A year after her resignation as British Prime Minister, Liz Truss is trying to redeem her reputation. In English, it's called hindsight, when you are wiser later. Hindsight is looking back, often wistful, sometimes painful. Going back in detail is a genre of its own in political reporting, producing big books, and the UK has been particularly busy lately. The density of events certainly gives that away, and there are books on the fall of Boris Johnson, on the general chaos in Westminster, and there are reconstructions of Liz Truss' time as Prime Minister. Unlike Johnson, however, the Liz Truss review not only includes the last time, but the entire 45 days in office. The Liz Truss chapter is perhaps the most remarkable, strange and unusual, but certainly the shortest in British political history. It all started a year ago on Wednesday when Liz Truss travelled to Scotland after winning the seemingly never-ending party campaign against Rishi Sunak to be appointed Prime Minister by the Queen at Balmoral. Then there was a photo taken that was shown again and again in the weeks that followed. The last official photo of the Queen. The Queen was wearing a cardigan, in the background the fireplace was burning. The Queen died two days later on September 8th and Liz Truss and a few of her closest advisors were already in her Downing Street apartment working on her eulogy. Some sat on the floor as Boris Johnson had taken most of the furniture with him when he moved out. Details and anecdotes like these can be read for example in the well-researched book Out of the Blue by the two journalists Harry Cole from The Sun and James Heal from The Spectator. The two are considered to be well connected in Westminster, well documented is an evening in Birmingham last year at the chaotic party conference of the Tories as well. At that time, late at night in the corridor of the party hotel, several eyewitnesses followed a loud argument between Cole and the media chief of Downing Street. During the argument, Cole is said to have planted his foot in the closing elevator door. It was about a story in the sun about a spectacular U-turn. Truss and her finance minister, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kwasi Kwarteng, unexpectedly announced that they would scrap the top tax rate of 45%. The pound then plummeted to unprecedented lows. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, intervened and it was an economic disaster. And then, during the memorable party conference in Birmingham, Trust decided to reverse the deletion, which the Sun tabloid also learned because Cole was having dinner with Kwa Teng when Trust summoned the Chancellor to the hotel. Anyone in Birmingham at the time could spend days in amazement watching the Tories tear themselves apart on the open stage. In the end, it was clear that Prime Minister Liz Truss' time could not last much longer. Truss then lasted another 15 days. The Tories drifted so far away from Labour and the polls at the time that they still haven't recovered. Truss' personal popularity rating was now minus 59 points. Even the largely unpopular former Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn and unloved Prime Minister Theresa May were more sympathetic to the electorate on their worst days and Truss' resignation was ultimately inevitable. The picture painted of her last evening as Prime Minister is nonetheless touching. The night before she resigned, she cancelled an appointment with her new Chancellor of the Exchequer, Jeremy Hunt, and instead opened a bottle of wine with her husband in Downing Street. They ate a kind of a pork pie, and the two are said to have tried quietly that evening to accept the inevitable end. With hindsight, as Liz Truss wrote in the Sunday Telegraphs a few months ago, she would have done some things differently. But you don't have to understand that as a deeper self-reflection or even remorse, because Truss also thinks that she never had a realistic chance. It was a coordinated resistance by the British business establishment and the IMF, and even Joe Biden opposed it from the start, as Truss said in a speech. The Rishi Sunak supporters in her own party were also a problem. And meanwhile, Liz Truss tries to redeem her reputation. She is giving speeches in Washington and Tokyo, 
and will soon be speaking at a London think tank event about her vision of how the government could ensure the UK achieves faster growth, according to an announcement. The fee for her rehabilitation attempts is decent, according to the register, in which MPs have to list her uh, part-time jobs. Truss has earned £218,000 for 14 hours of work so far this year, so no comparable to Johnson. She has also set up a growth commission, a working group on economic growth, bringing together like-minded business people and economists. And of course, she is writing a book. Liz Truss is likely to be back for the Tories party conference in Manchester later this month. She has already said so. And there are doubts in, in the party as to whether this will mean that the meeting will be quieter than last year. And sh she attending still those uh, appointments, we will see what that will mean for the general election next year. And uh, she is showing herself more now. Let's wait what Boris Johnson will do. But I think we will see some zombie revivals here. And if you want to know more about British politics or Brexit, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.